But got it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Shive Sports Presents. My name is Johnny Goodtimes, and uh, my good friend from uh, the Philly Blunt podcast, uh, Greg, is hopping on with us here. I'm hoping we've got uh, Reef coming in here. He's having some technical difficulties. But uh, we are thrilled uh, to have today's guest. Uh, really uh, an honor and a privilege for us. Uh, please welcome uh, Trey Thomas. Trey, welcome. Yeah, Trey. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. We are uh, we are psyched to have you, and we want to kick it off by talking to you a little bit. Obviously, we're in the midst of the NFL draft, and you've been there. You know, you've you're one of the handful that actually is there on on day one. And I don't think you know when you got drafted in '98. I don't think you were actually in attendance. It was it was a different show no. back then, um, yeah. kind of a whole different program. But tell us a little bit about what that day was like for you. Well, you know, because uh, during that weekend for the draft d back in 1998, wow, it seems so long ago, man. You know, uh, it was right around spring break time, you know. So, like, around around that year, you know, you would have um, MTV and all that would come down to Daytona, and they would have, like, this, this big spring break event going on down there. So, I they asked me if I wanted to go to New York for the draft. I told them, no, nah, man, I'm going to go hang out and do the spring break in um, Daytona. And uh, that was pretty much it for me. So the night before the draft, I was with my boys just hanging out, you know, and uh, just, you know, just reflecting on what was going to happen the next day. And then, you know, the next day comes, I had a big, uh, a big barbecue at, um, at the park that's now named after me now back in my hometown. And, uh, you know, we just had this huge event, man, had a big party. And, you know, it was awesome, man, when you get that phone call, you know, you go from, you know, just all the hard work that's gone to that. And then now all of a sudden you you your, your dreams come true. And it's like you're with a team that, you know, that you hopefully it's a team that you wanted to go to. But for me, I always wanted to come to Philly right after I took all the little tour around the different cities and stuff. So it was just awesome to get that phone call. Trey, who called you? Uh, Mark. Mark, uh, I, can, I never can remember Mark's last name. <laughs> he was uh, he used to do that. He was our uh, player personnel. And okay. uh when I was at Florida State, he and Butch came down there to do um to invest, you know, do like a little, I guess, a more more of a questioning type situation, just because I had a couple flags, you know what I'm saying? When I was in college, you know, yeah. you know here and there. Yeah. Thank so God you, thank God you didn't have a Twitter account. Yeah, exactly. You know, social media <laughs> wasn't going on back then. I don't even think we were still doing what's that MySpace or whatever yeah. that stuff. But anyway, yeah. so um, yeah, so you know, it was just. They came down and then I told him, I was like, look, man, if you guys draft me, Mark, I want you to be the one to call me. And he called, man. And then they wanted me to fly out that day to come up to Philly. But I had been hanging out all day. And I was just like, nah, I'll, I'll fly out the next day and come out. You know, but it was just an amazing time. Do they give you the uh, tray? Do you want to be a Philadelphia Eagle? Was it something <laughs> like that? Nah, nah. It was just like, hey. Mark called. He was like, "Hey Trey, I told you I'd call you, man. Hey, here you go. You're gonna be our pick, 11th pick in the draft." Nice. Yeah. Wait. So did the can't... phone? Right. Sorry. Go ahead, Reef. I was gonna ask. So did the 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 I'm Reef by the way. I came late. I had some tech issues. Um. Did you did your phone start ringing immediately with 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 people that you hadn't heard from in forever? Like, hey man, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. You know, I always kept a kept a tight circle anyway. You know, with my family and friends. So, uh, you know, it, it, I, I really didn't have that big of a problem. Uh, but one of the things that was, you know, your friends do back then, you know, when we, you know, because you're sitting there waiting for the call, waiting for the call. And then my friends will call and just be messing around. Hey, I'm such and such with the Cleveland Browns, you know. And I'm like, man, <laughs> man you know, I can't, I can't, get, I just kept hanging up on guys like, you know, until Mark called. And then that was it. But, you know, you got a couple of friends that will mess with you and stuff. But, man, it, it was just. Just an awesome experience, you know, and then to go to the city that I wanted to play for, it was, it was just beautiful. What's it, what's it like when you walk back on the campus? You and Andre Wadsworth, right? He went in that, that draft too? Yeah, Ooh, Wadsworth. You, you, yeah, he you was like, in that draft. You like Kings walking back on the campus after spring break? Oh, yeah, man, because, uh, you know, uh, yeah, because we, we had an apartment complex in Tallahassee. Like, I, I'm, I'm banned from Tallahassee from, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I can't rent a car from Enterprise. I'm on the blacklist from that, just from my Tallahassee days. 
And I'm pretty sure I'm on some type of list when it comes to apartments there as well, because, I mean, it, it was ridiculous. I, I was going to ask you why you're still hanging around in Philly when you've got, you know, when you've got all these connections down in Florida. But now it's making sense, I guess. You're just still allowed in Philly. Yeah. Well, you know what? Now, I, I'm da- now I'm down in Florida now. So um, I work at IMG now. So I took over the offensive line at IMG and I'm, uh, I'm, back, I'm back in the trenches, man, you know, getting back into coaching. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. When when did uh, you just started that recently, right? Yeah, I just started um around January, February. So uh, we just started our spring ball now. So man, yeah, man, I've been down here coaching. And it, it, what do you like better? You like coaching on the radio some too. Which which do you prefer, being a coach or being a radio guy? Uh, you know what? I like I love radio. Radio is just really fun, man. Especially with Jamie Lynch and then you know you got Mark Farzetta and them and Sam and all those guys. You know, it was and Bob. You know, it was real cool to have that group. You know, and and I, what I like about radio is just you can, you can just be whatever you want to be. You can be yourself, and, and you know, I, I really enjoyed it. But I, I kind of miss being in the trenches, you know, and just being able to coach. You know, this this is something that I always felt was in me. You know, and uh, I had that little taste of it when I coached for a couple of years with the Eagles. So uh, to get this opportunity again is something that I'm really enjoying. And I can say I've had the honor to sit at a bar with Trey and he broke down some offensive offensive linemen and he had glasses moving around and there was like six <laughs> of us. It was like he was talking Vulcan language. The, the the depth of his knowledge of blocking and foot movement is out out of control. Yeah. He was giving yeah. you he was giving you trench talk. Yeah, uh, we trench were all talk. Just yeah. Like, yeah, we're all just <laughs> mystified. We couldn't even speak and we didn't even know what he was what was happening. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's, I think that's got to be, you know, that would be a question for me is like, I think that, you know, it's it's so easy for people to say, well, yeah, these guys are so big and, you know, that's how they can they can block this defensive end. But there's so much more, especially left tackle. I mean, it's considered one of the, the headiest positions in the sport. Um, can you talk mm-hmm. a little bit about that part of the mental aspect of playing that position? Well, it's a whole lot that has to happen, you know, it, you know. First of all, we got to get a center that's going to make the right call, you know, because everybody just feels like, all right, oh, this play just happened. Well, <laughs> I need to, I need the center to come up. He needs to declare who's the Mike linebacker. Then once he declares the Mike linebacker, then all of our responsibilities break down from there. So then you have to deceive. Well, you have to know if you're dealing with a four-three defensive front or if you're dealing with a three-four front. If it's an odd front where you have the three defensive linemen, two outside linebackers, two middle linebackers. So you know. First, we got to declare who's our middle linebacker. And then from there, we just kind of, you know, we are uh, depending on the play. You know, if you have a play going to the right, then I'm saying, all right, we want to go call him our Mike linebacker. Then we're going to get a combination block that's going to go up to the right. And then we get a combination block that, you know. So there are a lot of footwork. There's a lot of steps that have to happen when it, when it's a play. Uh, if it's an outside zone. You want to step a little bit wider. You want to bring your inside foot down the center of the of the defensive end, and you try to create movement that way. You want offensive linemen to back off the ball a little bit. A lot of times you see some of these young guys where they get up on the ball and they wonder why they stalemate. Well, it's because you didn't get your two. You want Every time you have a run play or anything, you want to get two steps down to create movement. Now, yeah, see now now they look like those guys at the bar. Yeah, yeah. Going yeah. I was I was trying to front like I'm like, yeah, yeah, that sounds yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so, the, so the simple answer is you need to back up off the ball so you can create some movement. And then when it comes to pass protection, you know, that's a whole other thing, man. You gotta, you know, because then now we're talking about, you know, depending on which stint, which foot the defender has back, you know, if you're gonna be a puncher or a grabber, I personally teach guys to be punchers just because it's a lot easier when it's when it comes to having to deal with games. So I want you to be able to shoot your hands, not be a guy that gets out there and lets the defensive end just climb into your chest. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much. So, yes, yeah, so there right. is a lot of mental aspect to it. To the <laughs> yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot that has to happen and, and, and it happens really quick, you know. So even if it's a slot protection, you know, when you say, all right, you know, you see uh, – if we have a slide to the left and we say, all right, this is going to be our two jet. Back then it was two jet for us. And so now you got Jamal Jackson, Hank Fraley or Kelsey or any of them. They might sit out there and say, Lee, well, now you got to say, OK, I have to look at this defensive end. But I also have to look outside to make sure that if that corner comes, you got it. So, you know, all of that happened. And what I like about the offensive line, you have to have all five guys operating as one. 
Can you talk a little bit about those uh, early 2000 Eagles teams? You guys were going to the bowl, you know, I mean, going to the almost every year you guys were contenders. You finally get there. You didn't get it, but that was such an exciting time for, for Eagles fans because we had a team that was really badass. And uh, I just, I always wondered what would that like playing for those teams? Oh, it, it, those were fun teams, man. You know, when you go out there and you just whooping everybody, you know, we were just out there just, just running through everybody. I thought I felt like our team was uh was really strong. We had a really strong unit within the locker room, and it was a lot of fun, man. You know, we put in a lot of work. Juan worked us, you know, he he, he worked us to the to, to the bone, man. But I thought that we really had a good squad, and it's it's unfortunate that we just didn't finish it with that with a winning a Super Bowl. Do you when you think about that Super Bowl, do you still get a pit in your stomach? Or you still do you still get uh, does that still bug you or did you finally have to let that go? I had to let that go. You know what I'm saying? You had your we had our opportunity. We didn't make it, we didn't uh we didn't see we didn't it didn't work for us, we didn't win, so you had to let it go, move on, you know, and that's just uh as a player, that's what you have to do anyway on any play. You know, you can't hang on to one game, you can't hang on to one play. You have to continue to move forward. So, yeah, I let that go. Th thinking back to those Eagles teams, um, was there anyone you dreaded whenever they took control of the music in the locker room? Someone had a terrible <laughs> taste in music? Nah, I used to have my headphones on anyway, so it really didn't matter, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, because uh, we all had our headphones in. You know, you had Hugh running around screaming all the time. So, you know, it was always a wild atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's one of the things I appreciate about Big Red, man, Coach Reed, you know, he did a good job of just allowing us to be what we were. You know, he didn't want us to change anything. Just be however you are, you know, just don't get arrested. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I think that helped us, you know, go out there and perform as players. Mm -hmm. Did he do like and this? Congratulate him after him finally getting one after all these years? Yeah, absolutely. I called him. I actually went to Kansas City last um, last offseason and uh, spent some time out there in training camp with him. Awesome. Did, did he actually do fast food Fridays here in the cafeteria? Uh, yeah, we used to have the fried rice and all the, you know, had the ju little junk food Friday. Yeah, <laughs> we had the ribs and all that, man. So, yeah, he had – he had he, that was definitely something that he had um, going back then. What's something that you miss? What's something you miss about being a player? Um, the locker room, you know, just the camaraderie. You know, it's, it's nothing like it. You know, you can't find that type of environment anywhere else, you know. Uh, you know, it, it, you could just be, like I said, like you could just be whatever you were. You know, it, it was okay. I walked around all the time with a leather football helmet on, you know, <laughs> one of those, you know, and, and it was cool. Like everybody, you know, it was, it, yeah, I walk around like that right now. They might call somebody, you know, they might be calling, you know, hey, hey, man, you know what? We got, we got a big one out here walking around with a, with a leather football helmet on. I think we need to check him out. But, you know, that was okay. Just walking around in the facility like that, and it was cool. And it was just being around your guys, that camaraderie that you have, you know, it, it's it's nothing like it. So you know, that's the main thing that I miss as a player. And then just being able to go out and compete on Sundays, you know, um, you know, that was always fun when you put in all that work, you know, Wednesday through Thursday, you know, Wednesday to Friday, and if Wednesday through Saturday or whatever that day is, putting in all that work to get to that game day, you know, that I miss that part of it. I really miss that part of it. And that's why I enjoy coaching so much now because I kind of, you know, get that again by, by being out there with these guys. Mm -hmm. One thing yeah. I'm curious, so with, the, with the, watching the draft now and the agents are pretty prominent, did you have a lot of agents that were courting you? And how did you go about selecting the agent you went with? Well, you know what, most of these schools, everybody has an agent that they're going to deal with, you know, so um, – at the time, I, I can't remember my man's name. Uh, you know, you you had so it's like Florida State. A lot of guys would go with their particular agent, or you know okay. what I'm saying. You how everybody had the you know their school that they kind of had everybody locked into. You know, so okay. um, I had maybe two or three guys that that were looking at that I was talking to, and then I ended up just going with um, All Pro Sports, Lamont Smith uh, and Peter Schaefer out of Denver. Okay. Yeah. This past off season was one of the uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, tumult, tumult and a lot of uh, craziness surrounding the Eagles. Uh, you had the whole Wentz situation. Then you had Doug getting let go and and uh, 
you know, you went through something kind of similar right after that Super Bowl. This is probably the craziest offseason since that famous offseason of the T.O. McNabb, uh, you know, sit ups in the driveway. Uh, what was what was that like after coming off a of Super Bowl, obviously hoping to get back and then just seeing this whole all this craziness develop with with T.O. going nuts and and doing the sit ups and everything else as a player? Are you frustrated that? this is becoming a distraction or are you just like, that's just them. Let them do their thing. Yeah. I was, I was always, that's just them. I mean, I got my hands full worried about who, with these DNs that I got to deal with. So I really didn't care. I didn't really get into the whole T.O. and McNabb thing. I still don't get into it, you know, just cause you know, they still, I, you know what, what man, T.O. is still fired up. Right. Man, it, it, is it, 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 it is hilarious. It is hilarious. <laughs> But the only thing I wish now is that they end up in the same old folks home and just let them battle over Joe yeah. all the time. You know, that's that's what I want. You know, I, I want T.O. and Five to end up in the same old old folks home and mm -hmm. just let them just battle it out. That that would be hilarious. <laughs> Speaking about worrying so about I've, the I've, I've, yeah. oh, ahead, Reed. I read somewhere that the average NFL player lasts like three, four seasons, and you played well beyond that. What do you uh, attribute to the success of your longevity just to be able to last that long? Knee braces. I wore knee braces. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wore knee braces, took care of my body, man, you know, and uh, just stay prayed up, man. You know, uh, yeah. and my wife, you know, my wife stayed on me, you know, made sure I was doing all the right things uh, to take care of my body, uh, you know, just so I could, you know, was I, I wasn't. I wasn't a super in, you know, I was in good shape. I wasn't a six pack guy, but you know, <laughs> I did what I had to do to make sure that I could go out there and perform. Uh, and I think being able through pain, you know, it, that's, that's, you know, you're going to get aches, you're going to get bumps and bruises. You're going to, you know, you're going to have be a little injured, but sometimes you got to play through that. And um, I think that that, that helped a lot, you know, being able to have that in me to, to, to push through. You played at both the vet and you also played at the link. And so I got to ask you, were there any positives of playing at the vet or was going from the vet to the link, like going from the red roof end to the Ritz Carl? I love the vet. I miss the vet, man. The vet was like, you know, shit. Well, I'm sorry. For the, vet, sorry. Was, <laughs> the vet was amazing, man. You know, just the atmosphere. It was like an old Coliseum. <laughs> you know, if everybody's just right there on you and you're on this crappy turf and nobody wants to be there, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was awesome. I I, I really enjoyed the vet, you know, and fans did, other other team fans did not want to come there. They didn't come because they knew what would happen. So, you know, it, it had a, it had an aura about it. So I, I really missed the vet. I, I really enjoyed playing in it. You said you were worried about opposing DNs. Were there any DNs that you loved coming up on the schedule and playing against? And any, like, who did you dread blocking? I, I really, uh, I, I, Simeon Rice was always the one that was on uh, the one. Like, I'm like, damn, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right, got Simeon this week. You know, and then yeah. I would have, uh, then Juan would have me out there doing pass sets against Ike Reese to kind of get that speed that I'd have to deal with. And uh, but he was one of the harder ones that I had to deal with on the regular. Um that I really just was like, damn, here we go. You know, but everybody else I felt like, you know, I, I felt pretty good about because Simeon would just change the way we protected. You know, um before, you know, we would always we were always taught to shoot both hands, shoot both hands. But Simeon would come out and he would show chest and make you shoot both hands and then he'll take it away and clamp your outside arm. So he made us start playing more like a boxer where we would only shoot the inside hand, shoot the inside hand, only bring your outside hand if you really need it. So uh, hmm. he really changed the way we played. So, I, you know, I, I, he was the, definitely the one that, that caused a lot of problems for me. I mean, he beat me on a three-step drop one time. I, I just was like, <laughs> damn, you know, five, I'm sorry. I mean, you know, because, hey, man, put this, hey, Tristan, put this thing in the, in the refrigerator, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sorry about that, my son, man. That's right. no, man. <laughs> a little, a little dude's gonna come running by here any second. I'm sure. Knock, knock. The computer. <laughs> well, mine is about six nine, six ten. So you know. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. What was it? What was it like? You know, when you're running out of that tunnel, I think that's something that all of us as fans just can't even 
wrap our heads around when you're running out of a tunnel and 65, 70,000 people are going nuts. Is that just like the biggest buzz on earth? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of energy created by um, coming off of that, man. That's 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 all something that you really look forward to. You know, you always want to hear a hey, offense is getting called out. Hey, that's awesome. And, you know, you enjoy that. It helped build up that energy to get, come out down the field. But then it was something totally different when you saw defense get called out. And then you got B, B Dog coming out of the dog on tunnel the way he would do it. I was like, dude, like, I don't even understand how you're not separating your shoulders right now. The way he would come out of that, out of the tunnel sometimes, and just the energy that he played with was just so ridiculous. And, you know, that that introduction was just setting it up for him. And, you know, it was just, you know, and nobody else could do that. I can't come out <laughs> around like that. You know, I'd be done for the rest of the day. But, uh, you know, so it, it was awesome, you know, to just have that, have that opportunity. Was he always he on like that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was, you know, like now when it, when it was meeting times and all that, he was cool, you know, he was kind of a cerebral guy, like real laid back. But man, when his, when he put his helmet on, it, 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 that's how it was all the time. It was like a transformation from like, yeah, the, yeah. No. Uh, hey, hey, Trey, did you get a chance to watch um, Penny Sewell, this, uh, the guy who got drafted, the, the tackle who got drafted this year? People were talking about him like he's a generational player as an offensive tackle. Yeah, the kid out of Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, I, I sat down and watched some of them. Um, I had one of my uh, my NFL guys reached out to me and asked me about him. So I went back and I watched some of his film, man. He, he's solid. He's a solid yeah. technical guy. You know, um, I think he's really good. Uh, we'll see. You yeah. know, uh, you know, I, we shall see. You know, it, it's one thing to go out there and beast everybody in college. But, man, when you get up to this level here, man, it's, you know, you're going to get challenged. You know, yeah. and it's going to be guys that you never really heard of. That, that that's gonna give you everything that you're looking for. So um, we shall see. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he's going to play. Is he going to play tackle or guard? Because I think he's only like six four, six five. So we'll see. I mean, he's just beating up guys in the Pac-12. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've seen that before. We've seen that story before. <laughs> right. uh, when, when you went from college to pro, was that just were you just taken aback by how much faster the guys were at the pro level? I, I think that going from Florida State to the pros really helped me, though, man. Because I mean, look at That's Renard Wilson was uh, Renard Wilson, Peter Bowler, Andre Wadsworth. Uh, Greg Spires were guys that I were going against in practice all the time. So, I mean, you know, I felt like I was prepared to come into the NFL. And I had a huge chip on my shoulder back there. I used to talk so much shit. It was crazy. But, um, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I, I think that that helped me to get ready for 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 the for what, what I had to do on the NFL level. You know, um, yeah, but I, I thought that the speed on this level was was there. You know, it was definitely there. But I think that being going to Florida State and playing against some of the guys, practicing against some of the guys that I practiced against, and some of the guys I played against as well, kind of helped me get me ready for the NFL. Yeah. What What advice would you give someone that was coming into the league right now? Like, what's some something you could offer them to to, to carry with them as they this journey? Uh, to keep to just always continue to sharpen the blade, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's you can't come in and just feel like, oh, I'm here now. You know, mm -hmm. you, you see the average NFL career is what three years? All right, you can be out of there in three years or two, you know. Mm -hmm. So, don't just get here and automatically think that, all right, well, I made it now. You know, I'm in the NFL, I'm good. You got to come in ready to grind, and it's, it's you know, you got to be ready to put in that work on. Wednesdays through Thursday, Friday, make sure that you're challenging yourself. Don't take it off, you know, because the time that you stop, you can't flip the switch. I know a lot of people sometimes, sometimes guys are gamers where they just hit the switch and then all of a sudden they can go out there and change that energy and they play on a whole other level. Well, I think that, man, for, you know, for guys coming in, you got to come in and grind. You got to put that work in Wednesday through Friday, I think, and make sure that you have somebody that's going to challenge you in practice. Because when you get to game day, nobody's taking it easy. You know, nobody cares how you feel. Nobody cares if you got a little twinge in your pinky toe. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you need to come in ready to work, put that work in one Wednesday through Friday, and then let's go to work. Man. I, 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 that's what one of the things I would tell guys. And then don't get caught up in, you know, and trying to keep up with the Joneses. You know, just be comfortable with yourself and do what you do. 
Mm-hmm. I think the que- I think the question all the Eagle fans want to know from you, your perspective, can Jordan Maialata or Andre Dillard play? I think Jordan, you know, Jordan Maialata has definitely stepped up this year. Uh, you know, um, there are a couple of things I would clean up on him, but I think that um, as a tackle, he has really played really well this year. Uh, to me, he would be the starting left tackle, you know, uh, for, the, for, the, for the organization right now. Uh, Andre Dillard, I don't know what's going to happen with him. I thought that he had a pretty solid game against Chicago um, a couple years back the last time he played, and then it just seems like his technique kind of was uh, wishy-washy. But, uh, you know, that's something that, that has to be coached. You know, um, I felt like some of the some of the stuff that happened with him was um, just some technical breakdowns that I felt like was going to cause some problems. And then especially when you put him over at right tackle, you know, for someone that had never been on the right side, you know, that 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 was a big disadvantage for him because people just feel like, all right, well, if you play off the line, you should be able to play both sides. And, and that's not the case. You know, back when I was in college, we would play both sides. They had us playing left. They had us playing right. But um, to have a kid that's never been in the right in a right-handed stance, and you only give him two days of, of work in a right-handed stance, and you don't have guys that's going to challenge him in practice as well, so you know that 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 that, 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 that leads recipe for to disaster. Yeah, that leads to you getting snatched out at halftime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I thought that you know it was a bad situation to put him in, but you know it is what it is. But yeah. I, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him. Yeah. Was it was it a tough adjustment for you when you finally retired and and were no longer in the NFL? Was that a was that was that difficult for you? I know for some guys they say they don't know what kind of what to do next because they focus so hard on achieving the goal of making it to the NFL. Was that tough for you, or did you have a plan? Uh, no, I was cool. I mean, you know, I was uh, I didn't have a plan. But I, I wanted to not have a plan for a couple of years, you know, wow. just kind of just relax. You know, uh, I, I wish I would have gone into coaching right after right after it. But I wanted to take a year or so to kind of find out what I wanted to do. Did a couple businesses here and there, you know, just to see how how I felt about that. But uh, I was OK with being out of the league. I was all right with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I stayed married, you know, so that's that's good. <laughs> I mean, that, that's tough. I wanted to ask you, like, the temptation's got to be real, right? The hotels, uh, there's got to be women everywhere trying to hop on the athletes. Yeah. Well, thanks, <laughs> I, mean, I don't you know went anything to- about that. Hello. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. No, no, I'm sure. But the other guys, I'm sure. Yeah, right. yeah the other guys, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You, uh, so, so now you're 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 coaching. Uh, what what do you think is next? Are you are you wanting to be a coach in the NFL? Or are you wanting to uh, kind of stay with what you're doing now? What 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 are you looking at for the future? Well, you know, right now I'm at IMG, man, and, and you know, IMG is like being out at a at a university, man. You know, you get the, you get some top notch athletes down here, man. And I'm, right now it's just starting out, so. I'm really enjoying where I am right now. I just want to, because this is my first time taking on my own segment, you know, and, and being responsible for everything that goes on with my group, you know. So I'm really just enjoying this process right here and just trying to learn as much as I can, try to um, organize, get more organized, and just try to, you know, see where it leads me. I'm not sure. I don't know. I, you know, I'm cool right now, man. I ride a beach cruiser to work. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> nice. yeah, man, I got a sweet beach cruiser. I bought a Jeep down here, man. I'm just chilling. I'm not, I'm, I'm good right now <laughs> where, where I am. So, yeah, you, you can looking, go in looking at, except Tallahassee. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at photos of the IMG, man. It looks insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, because I have my son down here playing basketball. My youngest son is going to be coming in um, next year. He's going to start playing football next year. So uh, for the first time, he'll be a freshman in high school. So he'll be down here. So, man, it's just I, I'm good where I am right now. I'm really enjoying it. Awesome. Do you, uh, you know, do you um, uh, do you miss Philly at all since you've been down there? Or are you, uh, you really enjoying the warm weather? Man, I'm enjoying the warm weather, man. We just <laughs> – my son and I, we just took peeled the doors and my top off my Jeep, man. We just rode to Tampa for a little bit to go check out USL, 
go see the university down there and just ride around. And then we came back and I, I, I go for walks on the beach all the time, man. I, I, yo, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, I will be coming back to Philly a lot, you know, just because I mean, I, I spent so much, so many years there in Philly. That is, I feel like home as well. But um, it's cool to be back back down in Florida right now. Right. How how important was it for you to retire as an Eagle? I know you left, but you you made sure that that that's where you, you your jersey last jersey was worn. Yeah, that was extremely important for me. Uh, you know, just because you know I spent so many years there, eleven years there. So um, that that was extremely important. I mean, there was nowhere else that I would have even considered. Mm -hmm. All right, Trey. Well, we want to thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on with us. This was a uh, this was a, a blast, and uh, uh, this was a lot of fun for all of us. So we really appreciate you hanging out with us for a few minutes. All right, cool, my man. Well, y'all have a Thanks, good one. Yeah, take all it easy, man. Thank you for all you all did right, for the city, bro. Like for real. Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, man. Y'all take care. Yep, yeah, you too. Later.